Hi everybody, welcome to IndyCar again. This is, uh, what day is it today? It's the 16th of July, it's about 10.42. I'm Gordon Ross and we've got three pieces of news for you today. Uh, first up, okay, there's been a huge increase uh, in the number of drug deaths in England over the past year. Now, the, the deaths in England have been gradually rising, drug deaths that is, according to statistics, since early 2012 and have continued on a steep, straight uh, rise, almost continuously since then, and are still continuing to rise towards nearly 4,000 per year uh, alone. So England has obviously got a severe uh, drug death problem, and they really need to start thinking about doing something about it. In Scotland, we have fewer drug deaths in England, only 1,000. Uh, in fact, I think it was just over 1,000, just been announced today, 1,100 and something. So Scotland's drug deaths not nearly as high, but uh, any drug deaths are, are a bad thing. Any drug deaths at all, they need to do something about this. In England, uh, they have full control over drug policy. It's reserved to Westminster. They have the tools to do something about it, and yet they have allowed drug deaths in England to climb to nearly 4,000 in the past year. In fact, I think it might even be higher than 4,000 uh, because the, the nearest figures I can get this morning are, in fact, from last year. And if they continue along the same path, they should break through 4,000 this year. However, we're only being given the Scottish figure at the moment. So. It, at the moment, the Scottish Government is powerless to do anything about drugs legislation and is actively being blocked by the English Government for, from, the, uh, from doing something about these deaths by helping to set up safe, safe spaces where, uh, where drug users can safely inject without overdosing, which is the biggest problem for drug users in Scotland. Both England and Scotland have historically high uh, levels of drug abuse, and this goes back well into the 1980s. Many of the people who are dying from drug overdoses are not young people. These are, uh, in, in many cases, um, long-term drug users. Many of them could be uh, safely brought into management programs uh, and put onto methadone and have their lives stabilised. But because Scotland doesn't have the powers to do anything about that, we ha haven't got any way really of controlling these drug deaths and we are uh, at the mercy really of the English government which is still doing nothing about the figures in England either. So that's the first uh, item of news today. Second piece of news today concerns fishing and in a surprise move today Whitehall has accused Scottish fishermen of cheating, cheating the quota system. They have been accusing the Scottish fishermen because the catches which have been coming in have been predominantly of large fish without any of the, uh, the immature fish which have to be left in the sea in order to grow into full adults. The fact that the Scottish fishermen are bringing home, uh, bringing ashore only these larger fish uh, has led Whitehall to believe that they are cheating by throwing back uh, immature fish which are dead, in other words having brought all of the, the smaller fish on board with the larger ones and basically selecting the ones they want to bring ashore and the remaining smaller fish which have by that time died in the air because they can't breathe are then just thrown back into the sea to be eaten by a pack of seagulls which usually follows each trawler. Now the Scottish Trawlermen's Federation, the Scottish Fishermen's Federation is very angry about this and their representative this morning seemed genuinely uh, offended at the fact that his members would be accused of cheating the system by throwing back dead fish uh, in order to beat the system which incidentally Westminster has imposed on Scottish fishermen not the European Union, This is these are catch limits and these are size limits imposed by the British government on the Scottish fleet. Now it's kind of ironic that the Scottish Fishermen's Federation actually recommended to their members during the independence referendum that they vote no in order to protect themselves uh, from fishing quotas imposed by the European Union. And then again have continued to mainly, not entirely, but mainly to vote Conservative in elections in Aberdeen and Peterhead. Uh, mainly out of tradition, I suspect, that landowners and fishermen have tra traditionally voted Conservative. But now we can see the result of those votes is that the Conservative government in Westminster is now blaming those self-same fishermen 
and accusing them of cheating the system which the British state has introduced and imposed on these very men who voted for the Conservative Party in the first place. So now the chickens are coming home to roost for the Scottish Fishermen's Federation. I know not all of the members of the Fishermen's Federation uh, are Conservative voters, and I'm not suggesting that they are, but this is a slap in the face to those fishermen who are not cheating the system. And I can probably say with, 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 um, with some confidence that this is just an accusation. These fishermen are probably the most diligent in the world in terms of protecting the fish species because they know they have to come back out and fish to make a living. If they overfish or they don't uh, have the right net size, then these immature fish will simply die and will not mature to full size. There will be no fish left in the sea. So I'm pretty certain that the fishermen are not cheating. I think this is a, a, a very un, unfortunate turn of events for those men who put their trust in the British government to protect them uh, and to protect their livelihoods, now accusing them of cheating their own system. Finally today I wanted to talk about the new uh, President of the European Commission who is being appointed today. Her name, uh, I'm just checking to make sure I've got the name correct here, is Ursula uh, von der Leyen and she is, or was, uh, the former German um, equivalent of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, so their, their Finance Minister. Uh, and she is about to be uh, officially, uh, shall we say, officially welcomed as the new head of the European Commission, as appointed, incidentally, by all of the leaders of the 27 member states. So though people think that this appointment is not uh, democratic, you have to remember that the leader of the Commission, which uh, instructs various governments on what legislation to put in place, her role is largely, um, well, her role, her position is chosen by all of the member states. So whoever whoever is put forward by each member state to be the, the commission uh, commission president has to be agreed by all 27. So it is a democratic process. It's, this woman has been basically selected by our, uh, our leaders as well as the leaders of the 27 other European states. Now what's interesting uh, about Ms. Uh, Ms. von der Leyen is that when she was interviewed uh, a few months ago uh, she was. Uh, she was. It was actually not not so much an interview. It was a conversation that she had uh, with our uh, Scottish National Party MEP Alan Smith. Had asked her um, about Scotland, uh, and I also asked her about what would happen if uh, the sec if the uh, Article 50 was revoked at the last minute. Would the United Kingdom be welcomed back into the European Union? She said, "Of course it would." There were no conditions on Article 50. If the UK decided to revoke it at the last possible second, there'd be no punitive measures taken and the UK would just remain. It was also assumed from that conversation that um, Scotland could remain as well if it decided that it didn't want to leave the EU. When she was pressed uh, by Alan Smith, it was discovered that uh, uh, Ms uh, van der Leyen was also a fan of Nicola Sturgeon. She said as much in the European Parliament and also said that one of her daughters was studying in the UK so she understood a lot more uh, about the way the education sector worked in Scotland as opposed to the way it was financed in England and she expressed a wish to come and, and visit. Alan, Alan Smith had invited her to Scotland to see this. So we now have a, uh, a new European Commission President who's very much a fan of Nicola Sturgeon and was also open uh, to visiting Scotland in the near future. So again we see the European Union's uh, basically top civil servants and their leaders being very pro-Scottish and in this case we have a, a German female, I think the first female president of the European Commission if I remember correctly. So this is a step forward for the EU as well. Another uh, change in the traditions, you know, the usual parade of, of, of old white men who tend to be at the top of, um, of positions of power in the West. So now we have another woman in a very powerful position in the European Union who is, or alleged she, she is a fan of Nicola Sturgeon. So the fact that Scotland is so well regarded in Europe I think is, is something that we need to take some uh, comfort from because in this particular period at the moment where we are waiting for a new a UK leader to emerge out of the, oh, I don't know what you would call it, this this 
bizarre uh, choosing of the new the new ruler that the, the Tories are undergoing. And remember, in about what is it, seven days' time now? This is the 16th, isn't it? So on the 22nd of this month, we'll find out which of the two extremely unsuitable candidates that have been put forward is going to be the new Tory leader and hence the new. Uh, the, the new leader of the country, uh, the country of the UK, I mean here, not Scotland. And we still don't know what will happen. But it's good to know that we have friends in high places in Europe, and it's also good to know that the European Union's offices in Edinburgh are remaining open indefinitely. So I take heart from all of these things, but I also take heart from the fact that despite the fact that the drug deaths in Scotland are at a historic high level, they're at a historic high level in the UK generally, in England particularly, at nearly four times the level they are in Scotland. So there's a serious problem with drug use in the UK and it can only be fixed by Westminster because only they have the power to legislate on how to deal with drug use and how to deal with the problems of people dying from overdoses. That can only be, be dealt with by the English government the Scottish Government has no powers to do anything about it. That's about it for today. I, I feel a little sorry for Scotland's fishermen today. They have, they have really been slapped in the face after being told if they voted Tory and if they voted a, a, against independence that their livelihoods would be safe, they'd be well treated and their quota system would be abolished and everything would be hunky-dory. Here we are now with another quota system and the English Tory Government accusing them of cheating the system that was imposed on them. So I hope the fishermen are beginning to wake up and realise what voting Tory really means now. That no matter what way they do what way they, they jump and whatever they do, the Tory government will still come after them and still blame them and still uh, beat them down. Not because uh, they've, they've voted Tory but because they're Scottish fishermen. And they can be berated in this way with no proof. There is no proof that these fishermen have been throwing dead small fish back into the sea. Nobody can prove any of this at all. I think it's a disgusting accusation that's being made against the fishermen. And maybe the fishermen now can see the true nature of the Tory government and the, the people in Whitehall who are, are running the fisheries policy on behalf of the United Kingdom are using it as a stick to beat the Scottish fishermen with. Anyway, that's about it for today. Keep up with the news as usual. Remember, always look below the surface of whatever is being said to you in the BBC and ITV news. Look for what's not being said. As I've said today, English drug death figures are four times higher than the Scottish ones. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.